Hello folks, it is Friday, you have made it to the end of the week, congratulations to you, well done. And if you haven't made it to the end of the week, because your end of the week is maybe on Monday or Tuesday, then thank you very much for working over the weekend so the rest of us can have a bit of a break. Thank you so much and I hope that uh, you know your working weekend goes quite well for you. If you like what I do, please do subscribe to the channel. Each and every single time you do that, you really, really, really help me out. So please continue to subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 15,000 subscribers before the end of the year. We're pushing and pushing and pushing, and we're almost there. If you've not subscribed yet, then make sure you do. And if you know anybody who could get anything out of my videos, whether it could help them or anything like that, then please make sure that you share my videos with them and you maybe tell them to subscribe for your old mate Northern Exile. That would do me wonders thank you very much and also if you're getting any models head on down to composite games down below use the promo code northern exile down below to get yourself five percent off at checkout they're a lovely 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 local store and they do a lot for the for their local community so if you can head on over there and help them out maybe even get involved in their prize draw that would also help them out all of the information is down below in the description all right cool let's do some hobby nightmares shall we Ooh, the old hobby nightmares. Sneed says... Sneed? Who calls himself Sneed? Sneed. Howdy, Mr. Exile. Please call me Sneed. I have done. I don't know why you call yourself Sneed, but there you go. This story is short, but involves a rather memorable hobby girl who has managed to annoy our entire Warhammer scene. <laughs> Alrighty, let's jump in. Now, I have never asked nor heard her name, so I'll just call her Sarah. I have seen her quite a few times at our local game store before, before it had to shut down, and we moved to a gaming bar that graciously started opening on our normal Warhammer day to give us all somewhere to play. That's cool, that's a good business. Good business. My first proper time talking to her, however, was when my brother and I were sitting in front of the bar waiting for it to open and we saw her walking from across the street as she loudly proclaimed, Sorry, I would have parked closer, but my agoraphobia. Hee 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 Oh my god, here we go. Which was quite odd. <laughs> Being as though we were strangers, why should we care? This was a habit of hers. She'd come to play War Machine and you'd randomly hear her loudly exclaim something, something followed by, you know, my depression or anxiety or whatever problems she had felt we all needed to know about. Hmm. It sounds like a cry for help. All this unwanted and annoying chatter was happening while Sarah and her friends shared a big table with my brother and our friend Ken whilst they played Kill Team. Those two are already slower than hell, takes them three hours to get past those two uh that those the sorry it takes them three hours to get past turn two most nights if you ever played kill team you realized how insane that is and they don't also need a basket case constantly shouting about her personal issues next to them and distracting them as they go finally last week sarah was talking quite loudly with her friends about what it means to be transphobic <laughs> oh, no. God, no. But what it means to be transphobic and how not to be transphobic. Well, thank you for your... Thank you for your diagrams there. Yes, thank you. Our friend Ken looked over and said, You know, I come here for escapism and to play games with my friends. Not hear everybody's hot takes. <laughs> that apparently did the trick and shut her right up. Until my brother Ken went to have a couple hits of his weed pipe. Of course he did. As Sarah was packing, she made sure she, it was known to everybody who could hear she is allergic to weed and it triggers her asthma. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. She left and we all started joking with the owner and discovered he and all of his staff have been keeping track of all of her issues since she's been telling everybody, everybody about them. So far, we have agoraphobia, anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, a marijuana uh, a marijuana allergy, asthma, hypothyroidism, 
Hi uh, uh, Hashi Hashimoto's disease, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and fi fibromyalgia. <laughs> oh my god. For now, that's all I got. I hope you have a lovely day. Oh my god. That is a... That is, that is somebody in need of help, my friend. That's not just a hobby nightmare. That is somebody in desperate need of therapy. Therapy was invented for people like that. That, that that's, that's where you are right now. Unless she's some medical marvel and has all of those things wrong with her at the same time. In which case, she would probably, she'd probably be, you know, a ball of goo if she ever actually tried to leave the house. You know? Um, what that is, is a cry for help. It's a cry for help. But this tactic... I've seen this a lot. Um, and there was one girl... There was one girl in university. Lovely girl. and uh, But she was a bit of a drama queen. Right? And every single time she didn't like something... She would say it set off something that she had. When this girl said... Oh, uh, yeah, that set off my asthma, blah, 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 I need to leave. I thought she was going to turn it around and say, that guy needs to leave. You know what I mean? Because that's what this girl at university did. Like, it would, it would all, she'd always have something wrong with her. She was always crying. She always needs to be the center of attention. And it was just, you know, uh, it was just one of those things. She was quite hot, right? And during my foundation at university, there are a few people in my university class who were like, hey man, you guys are obviously vibing, you should like get along and stuff. And I think she put them up to it. But like, it was just, just too fucking stressful. Like, I'll just, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Like, like, and by the way, I couldn't trust somebody like that with my feelings. For all I know, she fancies me this week and she'll fancy another guy next week, do you know what I mean? So I'll act on my on my own feelings and get my heart crushed by this fucking scatterbrain idiot who can't seem to decide what she wants from life. What she wants for dinner, let alone for life, you know what I mean? And this seems like one of those people that you're discussing here. Um, and I didn't, by the way, I walked away, I, I didn't do anything, um, anything mental. Anyway, uh, Snooky says... Dear North, Snooky here. First of all, let me preface this by loudly and proudly stating that getting into not only Warhammer 40k, but Warhammer in general, has been an amazing decision. It has an incredible community with a rich lore and history, and I feel like I am welcome in this community. Painting was something I didn't know that I needed, and the state of my mental and physical health has increased since I, since I got into the hobby. I now take long walks instead, listening to the Poor Hammer podcast, Adeptus Ridiculous, Hobby Nightmares, Major Kill, Where's Hammer, and many others. Well, thank you for putting me in that in that bracket there. That's lovely. Thank you. Writing my own Warhammer-related lore is something that has gotten rid of the writer's block that has plagued me for some time. My close friends have also succumbed to the Warhammer virus, with them purchasing their own armies and White Dwarf magazines thanks to my encouragement. Jay, one of my friends, is now a proud member of the Emperor's Children. Sheila now has become a snooty noble of the Flesh Eater Courts. Bailey has pledged allegiance to the Omnissiah through the Adeptus Mechanicus. And my close pal Ray has joined the ranks of the Dark Angels. There is truly no adrenaline rush like Warhammer Fever. Nothing can quite, can quite describe the carefree tension that flows through you when you realise your uh, when you realise your dice on are going on the table, or the feeling of excitement when you position your army in a place that mulches the enemy models. My local games workshop is an incredible place, and the atmosphere is nothing but pure excitement. Our manager, who I will call Tim for the sake of being anonymous, is very good at his job. He encourages playing and painting in the store and doesn't try to force money out of you by humping your leg to buy a KPI-related box. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, we say this a lot on the channel, but KPIs are key performance indicators. And those are the boxes that Games Workshop HQ want you to sell as a Games Workshop manager to know that you're growing the hobby properly. The small shop is always packed with players and painters, and Tim is more than happy to sit down and talk about law, rules, paints, or just life in general. Tim also has an incredible way of introducing people into the hobby. This method is mostly something I wish all Games Workshop stores did. He keeps 500 points, unpainted, grey armies in the back room, 
So let's say I want to buy some Plague Marines, but I don't know if I will like the way they play. Well, Tim will take the unpainted models of Plague Marines out of the back room. He'll introduce them to me, show me how they build and, and what they look like when they're finished. And we will play a quick demo game. So whoever is interested in buying can demo the army before they swipe their credit card. That is a fucking brilliant idea. That is a brilliant idea. If you, I know Games Workshop people listen to this, right? If you are a manager and you listen to this, do this. This is a fucking brilliant idea. As long as you can keep it on the down low. If you're a manager who's been there for a while. And you can get away with getting 500 points of an army once a month. That's a brilliant idea. Fantastic stuff. That's going to make him so much money. But that's a, it's completely against the Games Workshop rules. You know, number one, you're not allowed to play games in the store. Number two, you're definitely not allowed to play games in the store with Games Workshop models. Oh, oh, oh no. You've got to buy your own models and bring them in, right? And number three, you're not allowed to keep that many models in the back rooms. You know? That is that is huge. I, I So it goes against all Games Workshop rules, but I bet you that makes him a fucking wad of money. His try before you buy strategy helped me on or uh, helped sell me on my leagues of Otan army. There we go. The majority of the people who attend his store try to buy solely from him, myself included, to keep the store afloat. And the Games Workshop corporate machine is nice and oiled when it comes to keeping the store open. Tim has proudly stated that he has tried his best to scare off overly competitive or smelly players to keep the atmosphere wholesome, kid-friendly and a staple of what the hobby is about. Tim himself has said, Hey man, I'm just a fanboy they gave keys to. Nah, that's great man, that's great. Not so sure about the smelly one, I mean, I mean, some people just need a bit of help, you know what I mean? But I get what you mean, like, like proper, like, ingrained, super competitive tournament players. Yeah, Games Workshop's probably not the place you want to go and play your game, you know? Alright, now that the positive is out the way, and the environment of my local store has been accurately portrayed, I would like to introduce you to a man who I will call Clarence. Now, Clarence, up to the point where this story takes place, was a regular in the store. He was quiet and kept to himself, and would mostly just play games with a handful of people. This was because only a handful of people could tolerate him. Oh my god. I feel bad for this guy now. You see, Clarence was quite fond of wearing extreme political clothing, specifically the Confederate flag, around the store. Now, for some context to this, and I'm not sure if you or the audience are familiar with this here in the South, Southerners look down upon this kind of behavior. A good 98% of Southerners in the, in the US want the American Civil War to remain in the past. When most Southerners think of Southern tradition, we think of eating cornbread and riding four-wheelers. Wearing the Confederate flag not only makes anybody from the South look like a fucking idiot, but also disrespects the people who fought in that war all that time ago. It is people like this who are the reason for the stereotype of anyone from the South being an inbred, bigoted, illiterate asshole. On top of this abhorrent uh, display of, clo of clothing, he was a painting snob. Okay, um, I noticed this quite a lot when I was in the, in the States, and it was always in blue areas, in Democrat areas, they would refer to anybody from the South as a fucking yokel. Um, whereas I, I, I found that, you know, in red areas, in, in areas of Republican areas, they would generally be like, hey, the South, we always vacation there. They would always like go on vacations there, like Louisiana and Austin and all these other all these other places to, to just to soak in the local flavour. Um, you know. I think my ex father in law, one of his main one of his main things that he wanted to do was go to a ranch down south and actually ride horses for a bit down there and get get in touch with his roots. Because you know, it, you're American, right? You should should ride a horse. Get out there, get get in the I can't see how you can live in America and have a country that gorgeous everywhere, that gorgeous, and want to go elsewhere. I don't get the 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 American fascination with Europe. I just don't. Europe's a fucking shithole. I'm sorry, it is. Right? Uh, there are there are five or six nice cities in Europe. 
I'm being honest. Been to many of them, right? Five or six nice cities. But every country you go to, there's one or two nice areas, no problem. But the rest of it, right, you know, is a heavily built up, commercialized space. And wherever you go is full, if it's a nice place, is full of fucking tourists. Full of them. You can't get around them. Wherever you go, there's tourists. You can't move. It's not great. It's not great. It's great because it's different from America. But you guys don't realize how good you've got it. On your very doorstep, there is wilderness. There are, there are wide open plains, rugged mountain ranges. If you could design a fantasy world, a continent, it would look like America, minus the cities. That's what it would look like. You live right there. That's where you live. Fucking vacation, holiday, where you are. You're not going to find anything better in Europe, I promise you. Okay? Unless you're really into, like, you know, Italian Renaissance architecture, or castles, or medieval history, there's nothing here for you. Honestly. I'm sorry for shitting in my own backyard, but I'm here all the time. Like, it's just not... Go to one of the capital cities, yeah, I, and I know there are, there are, shall we say, um, uh, exceptions, you know. There are lovely places in Greece and Italy and Spain and all these other places. There are lovely places around, don't get me wrong. But why move the entire length of the Atlantic Ocean when you've got it in your own fucking backyard? It's right there. It's right there. Why are you spending another grand to do it over here in a colder place? don't understand it. I don't understand the American fascination with London. I will never understand it. I will never... Un it's a fucking shithole. It's a shithole. It's awful. It's, it's bustly. It's noisy. It's smelly. It's full of people who don't, wanna, don't want you to get on the train with them. Nobody talks to each other. Everybody's a snooty asshole. The entire place, it fucking sucks. It sucks. Why do you want to go there so much? They don't let you in Buckingham Palace. You're peasants. They keep you on the outside. Unless you book insanely in advance and pay a lot of money, then they might show you around the public bits. Dude, why bother? Why? I lived in London for ages. It sucks. <laughs> like, just go to Chicago. It's right there. Go to fucking San Francisco. Well, well, no, maybe not San Francisco. Some bits of San Francisco. It's right there. Milwaukee. Milwaukee, dude. Milwaukee. And Milwaukee people won't thank me for this at all. Milwaukee is the, the best kept secret in the US. It's a gorgeous little city. Beautiful winter city. Awesome. Dude, stay there. Go. Or go to Canada. But stay there. Why? Moving on. Uh, Clarence was an Alpha Legion player and his army was painted beautifully. Credit where credit is due, but half of us were sure he had it commissioned. My Greater uh, Thor uh, Thorian League army... My Greater Thorian League? Oh, right, okay. My Greater Thorian League army isn't the best, I will admit, but because money is tight right now, I did the best I could with what I had. I just have one brush and some paints that came with the start painting intro set. I had brought my army into the store one day and was playing against Tim's Chaos Demons, only for Clarence to stride over and remark, uh, Those are a disgrace. They don't even look finished. And then stride away. Now, I am more than open to criticism, but he did not offer any advice on how to get better at painting. He just came up, insulted me, and walked away. Now, this cut a little deep. Yeah, man, I can... Yeah, why wouldn't it? My hearthkin, or my hearthkin, look like a mess. But they are my mess, damn it. And I'm proud of them. Tim, after hearing this comment, said, Don't pay attention to him, man. He thinks that his painting skills are higher than, Pica uh, that are higher than Picasso's or something. Now, let me introduce two other regulars to this store. Kev a Custodes player, and Bill, a Space Wolves player. Kev and Bill are great guys, and are some of the best painters that I have ever seen. However, 
they are very self-critical of themselves. So, Clarence being Clarence would constantly crit critique and give them unwanted advice over at the painting table. They would just nod their heads along respectfully, being the bigger men, until he, until he realised they weren't listening and went away. This critiquing of other paint jobs really didn't sit well with them though, and brought their and brought their model and brought their mood, sorry, down. Okay. As a nice cherry on top of this douchebag scoop of ice cream, Clarence would axe bomb himself into oblivion whenever he was in the store. I'm not sure if in the UK if it has axe body spray. Yes, we do. We have axe body spray, but it's called Lynx. The original name of Axe was Lynx. And uh, in the US it's called Axe. But just now, it smells abysmal. He would come in reeking of the stuff, and will sometimes reapply a coat of it to his body, fumigating everybody in the store as he sprays it straight from the can onto his clothing. A few people have taken a moment to step outside when this has happened, and Tim has asked several times for him to do it in his car or outside, not in the confined space of the Games Workshop store. This all came to a head one dreary Wednesday afternoon when my buddy Ray and I came to the shop to roll some dice. A friend of ours, Chansey, was also there, and of course, who else but Clarence. Thankfully, Clarence wasn't in his normal confederate attire. Chansey, who was a word bearers player, thought it would be fun to play a four way 500 point game. Ray and I thought this would be fun, so we called over Clarence, thinking that maybe he wanted a different person uh, during play. Or maybe he was a different person during play. Rookie mistake. This was a huge mistake, yes. We set up, and Ray and I get to go first. During turn one, Chansey, Ray and I are talking about what situation might occur for the Great Athorian League and the Dark Angels to temporarily align while Clarence is sitting quietly on his phone. Keep in mind, the four of us and Tom are the only ones in the store. A few theories were passed between us. Maybe a chaos incursion on the world with, with minerals the Hearthkin wanted. Perhaps an orc war which, which only their combined powers could, could quell. And then, seemingly out of the blue, completely unprompted, Clarence says, You know, I don't hate Hispanics, but... <laughs> the heads of Chansey, Tim, Ray and I all turn to stare at him as he un un unawarely goes on about something to do with the US border, crime statistics and the current president for about three minutes without reading the room once. One moment we are talking about how the Dark Angels and the Thorian Lee could be friends and the next Clarence is spouting some bullshit about an unrelated topic. At the end of his of his tangent, he says, uh, "What? I'm I'm just saying." Before looking back down to his phone, Mister North, please take a sip of tea here. I would say you earned it after reading that brain cell killer of a sentence. Okay, I, I'm going to. Thank you. More people should do this. More people should give me a break and let me let me drink my tea. Ah, do you know what? A friend of mine, Logan, who's on the Discord, sent me this mug. And I've just made a cup of Yorkshire tea in this mug. It's a fucking stunning mug. It's brilliant. I, this is a really nice cup of tea. Most of the mugs I've got in my house are like either well used or, or well washed but used, you know what I mean? Or just old. Uh, even the new ones don't quite taste right. This is a cracking cup of tea. If you win one of these, if you're lucky enough to win one of these, congratulations to you, because um, it is a lovely, lovely, lovely cup. Lovely mug. And I hope you get to win one. But you'll need to get your painting supplies out to win one. There you go. There's your intermission. There'll be more information on that as we get towards Christmas. Now, I think at this moment, Tim snapped. I, I don't blame him. Fals Games Workshop Manager here. I am losing my shit right now. I am absolutely losing my shit right now, if, if I'm... My god. He stood up from his painting table and said, You can take that political bullshit somewhere else, Clarence. Maybe in whatever Reddit forums or, prou or Proud Boys meeting you're involved in. 
but you sure as hell aren't going to single out any race in my store. Clarence looked shocked and replied with, Hey, it's just free speech, man. To which Tim said, and with freedom of speech comes from uh, comes freedom of consequence. And on private property such as this, I will decide what can and cannot be said. So you can either shut up and roll your dice like a good boy, or take your political baggage somewhere else. And he's right. He's right. O on private property, my friend, you don't get to say what you want. Yeah, if somebody comes into my house and says shit I don't like, free speech don't count. If I don't like what you say, you leave. You leave. Uh, this is private property. There's nothing. The free speech does not happen in this house. It doesn't. Right? It happens in, in society, yes. In private property, no. What I say goes here. Yeah? What I say goes. We entertain, in my house, we entertain my preferences. That's what, that's what my house means. Right? If I've invited you to my house, it's because I think we have similar personalities and we can be friends. Right? Yeah. If I, if I now think that you're not that kind of a person because you're spouting bullshit on the left or the right hand side of the argument, you'll be asked to leave. Freedom of speech has nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing to do with it. Or I'll entertain you. To be honest with you, if you came out with a, with a far right or far left argument, I'd probably have quite an interesting discussion with you in my house. To be fair. Because I, I do like talking about stuff like that in private. You know what I mean? But, like, not in a public sphere, like, in a games workshop store or shit like that. If somebody asked my opinion on YouTube, that's another thing entirely. But, like, on in a, in a store where other people are there and they haven't asked for, for a discussion like that, go fuck yourself, dude. Private property is private property. That's it. At this, Clarence, in a huff, threw his Alpha Legion into a box and stormed out of the store, mumbling something about the Constitution. After which, Tim apologised to us and took Clarence's place on the table, replacing him with some Chaos Demons. The rest of the day passed quite normally, and in a handful of times I've been down to the shop, I haven't seen Clarence, but I think this may be a good thing. So, so here's the thing, right? Before I carry on, um, he's, mem he's, m he's mumbling about the Constitution there. Um, the Constitution is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, and it's something that, you know, many countries have copied for very good reason. Well, most of them have got it wrong, but it is what it is. Even America's got it wrong, but it doesn't matter. I'm not getting into that. It's a really good idea, though, to have this, you know, thing that, that's always there. Um, I always found it really interesting that people argued against the Constitution and the, and the, and the uh, Bill of Rights. People argued against the Bill of Rights because they said, hey, if we put, like, ten rights on the Bill of Rights... If something else comes up in the future, it's not future-proofed. You know what I mean? So so a government could say, it's not in the Bill of Rights, you can't do it. Now, I, I can do whatever I want to you, because it's not in the Bill of Rights. Um, which is why we have amendments as we go along in time. And, and I always thought that was a really cool thing that happened to the, to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as, as things went on. So, um, they are there for to protect your free speech and protect your freedoms, okay? But what really fucking boils my girdle is when people use this sacrosanct beautiful thing to defend them being a cunt that's what i don't like and both sides do it right and left do it it's free speech man no it ain't not in my house i'm not on private property no it ain't right if i want to keep this place this place free of political thought and, and all that sort of stuff that's what it is you know and not just that, it's like... <sighs> Spreading hatred's not really what free speech is for. You're well within your rights to say it. And there, there was a woman on, on a show way back in the day who said, um, listen, there was another guy there, she was black, and there was another guy there who was like shouting at her for just being black, essentially. And she said, she said look, I don't agree with what this guy says, but the fact that free speech exists means that this guy can say what he wants, and I will fight to defend his right to say what he wants. He's wrong, but I'll still fight to defend his rights and for him to say what he wants. By my own behaviour, I will convince everybody else that this guy is wrong, and what he says about my race is wrong. And that was an incredibly powerful thing to me. That was an incredible, incredible... I need to find that somewhere. It was saved for ages on my old YouTube account. For, fucking hell, man. Yeah, I've had this one for years now, but... It must be 10, 15 years ago I saw that, and it, it struck such a chord with me. It was like... A, it, was, it was a random British politics show. Like, late-night politics show. I think it's Question Time or something. 
And I was just like, that is amazing. Like, like, you know, that she says that. It's exactly what I'm thinking. It's like, yeah, he, he may be wrong, but he's got his right to say it in a public sphere, in a public place. But using those rights to be a cunt? No, mate. No. Alright? No. Don't, don't hide behind them like a coward. Do not hide behind the Constitution and the Bill of Rights like a coward. Don't do that. That's horrible. What a shit house. Anyway, I will, carrying on, I will never understand people who bring politics, both right and left, into Warhammer. All we want is to play with our toy soldiers and talk about a, a fictional story in peace. Yet people think it's a great idea to bring real-world issues into such a simple and wholesome hobby. I really hope that you, Mr. North, haven't ever had to encounter that because, dear God, it is very annoying. Thank you for reading my hobby nightmare, Mr. North, and I hope everything is going well in the land of bad teeth and a big clock. Well, take away the bad teeth and take away the L from clock and yeah, everything's going well. Uh, the ancestors are watching your loyal listener, Snooky Fry. Cheers, man. Thank you very much. Um, Jason of the Argo says... Hey North, long time viewer here who just wanted to get in touch for a Friday episode. This mainly deals with a tale that could be epic, but I will slow it right down and shorten it for the channel. I've been a hobbyist for 25 years or so, and so I guess you could say I was one of the old guard. In that time, I've dipped in and out of quite a few times, but about five years ago, I jumped in completely and started collecting salamanders. I just love the deep greens and the dragon skin look. It really gets my imagination going. Well, good for you, man. That and darker skin models, I find much easier to paint. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Saying that also, I'm a black dude myself. So I guess... Uh, so I guess so it's really funny to see how people react when I get my models out. <laughs> The real chads just laugh and tell me, I should have guessed. <laughs> this guy's, this guy's a fucking chad, dude. This guy's awesome. That's really funny. <laughs> the real chads just laugh and, say, and tell me, I should have guessed. And we have a good chuckle about it before moving on with our game. That's brilliant, man. I love that. That's brilliant. Anyway, moving on. I've always been kind of looked down on for my choice in hobbies and my music taste. I love Metallica, Motorhead and other forms of classic metal. Most of my family aren't really into that kind of thing and see my choice of some kind of musical and personal betrayal. Which is hilarious as nobody asked them for their opinion but there we go. Well here's the thing man, I will, I will, send, I will put a video in the, in the description down below of Lemmy Killmeister from Motorhead giving giving a young black man who is into metal advice because everybody around him thinks he's some sort of asshole for liking metal music. You listen to that, you take it to heart, and you run with it, mate. Because he gives some really good advice. Really, really good advice. And it's also like, it gets the hair on your back of your neck going because he's so, like, quietly aggressive. <laughs> it's just brilliant. I'll put it in the description. It's brilliant. I've always done pretty well with women, but to be honest... I've never met one that I really clicked with. Not in a big way, anyway. Then I met Jean. Name changed, obviously. She was probably the most stunning girl you can imagine. I remember you mentioning the YouTuber Melanie King before, and she looked the image of her. Wow. Well, that, that, that's a stone-cold hottie, yeah. So that's the level we are talking. We met online, clicked on our first date, Ended up banging that very night, and then we're seeing each other from pretty much that point onwards. Dude, any any woman, any woman who will bang on the first date, I, my red flags are, are going up. Sorry, sorry. E every every woman who's done that with me has ended up being a fucking nut job, or damaged in some way. One of the two. No shade on you, mate. If you are a woman who's done that, no problem. We've all made mistakes, right? But, like, if I go out with a woman and, and, and that starts to happen, I'd be like, oh, well, maybe this is only a, a short-term relationship then, because, you know, it is what it is. Um, I couldn't believe my luck, in all honesty. I'd been on a dry spell. Well, there you go. That's why you did it. I had been on a dry spell, 
and had some really shitty moments in life until I met Jean. Things were going great, and she even went to a few metal gigs with me and didn't go crazy, as it was not really her, her kind of scene. The Warhammer, though, that was a line too far. <laughs> oh, shit. She'd always get a little freaked out whenever I talked about it, would pull back from those conversations and try to find me other things to do on the weekends I would normally game with the guys down at the local store. Thinking back, I was a, I was a complete idiot, man. I went along with what she was saying, though. She would say things like, uh, Winners don't do things like that. And, Toy soldiers ain't really a grown man thing, babe. Yeah, okay. This, this girl sounds like a... Um, a George Mental normie. And George Mental normies don't make good wives. Sorry, mate. George Mental normies don't make good wives. Especially not to nerds. What you've come across here is a normie a normal person who isn't into nerdy stuff, which is fine, no problem, but she's judgmental, and if she married another normie, she'd drive him up the fucking wall. Never mind you, mate, you should have walked right at this moment. Right at this moment. You've had your jollies, you've had your fun, drop her like a hot brick and walk away. This is what you do at this time. And don't buy into the tears. Well, you mean, you mean, you're only with me because you, you wanted to fuck me? Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's all you want from me, my vagina. If that's all you've got, yes. Yes. And that's clearly all you've got. So I, I've, I've had that. It was nice. And now I'm leaving. Cause, because, you know, you, you've got... I'm not saying that's all you are. But to me, you are. Because we're not compatible. Clearly. So you need to go find someone who you will hit on all the levels with. Right now, the only level I'm hitting on you with is your vagina. So I'm leaving. Goodbye. That's what you do. Take the band-aid off and leave. All right. Carrying on. Yeah, to hear a woman I liked and respected say saying that, a stone-cold hot one too, kind of killed the hobby for me. Yeah, man, if you don't have a spine, and most, most blokes don't, you learn a spine. You, you're not born with it. You learn it. You learn it. She was intelligent and driven and, all, and was always a go-getter. I work in sound design and make a decent crust. She was a lawyer in the city of London and doing well for herself. Mate. There are two places in London, right? There's London, Greater London, which is what London is, right? And then there's a place called the City of London. The City of London is a small... Like one mile square, you know, piece of, of the centre of London. The original medieval sector of London. Um, it's really weird to walk around because there's like odd castle walls there and shit. And all the main banks and lawyer houses and exchequer places are all there. And the, if you work there, you're earning a fucking crust, mate. You're earning good money. Our relationship went on and things were pretty well situated. We had a place together in the city, and the entire thing looked like it would, it would take off. Okay. Then, she came for gaming. The same tactic. She would fill my time and get me away from the PC, and belittle me whenever I did go to play something that I wanted to enjoy. And it worked. Then, she came for metal music, getting me to take her to normal clubs and R&B clubs instead of my usual haunts. Then, my clothes started to change. Out went the leather jackets, and in came suit jackets and other pieces that I didn't really feel comfortable wearing, but did anyway. Mate, learn the word no. I know it's difficult, I know. But if you're listening to this, right, and you're not Jason, right, but you're listening to this as a dude, don't, you can't negotiate with terrorists. Do you know why states don't negotiate with terrorists? Because if you negotiate with them once, they'll come back again and again and again and again and again and again. And you make yourself a target. Because they know that you can get shit out of you. Am I, am I comparing women to terrorists? Uh, kind of. But also, oh, the, bear with me, bear with me here, bear with me here. When you come across a woman like this, don't negotiate once. 
non-negotiable. My happiness is the game here, and it's non-fucking negotiable. Non-negotiable. If I'm not happy, this relationship's done. Donezo. Gone. Bye. Done. Right? This is a woman who is boss bitch in work, obviously. And she comes back home and she tries to be boss bitch with you. You don't allow that. You don't. Right? And if she and if she doesn't want it, walk. Say, well, if you want to be boss bitch, be boss bitch and die alone. Bye. And leave. Right? When she when she's in your when she's with you at home, she's not boss bitch. Okay? You handle your shit. You're a grown man. You dress yourself. You've got your own hobbies. And you don't let her truck with either of them. You don't tell me what to do. I'm a fucking grown man. Right? I'm not one of your little colleagues. I'm not one of your little simps at work. Right? You're here to suck my dick. That's what you're here for. Right? I don't care who does the cooking. Right? You're here to be in a relationship with me. That's what you're here for. All right? I do lovely things for you. You do lovely things for me. And we love each other. That's what happens here. You don't come back being boss bitch telling me what to do. All right? If you want that, if you want a fucking doormat, go and get one. I will leave. And do you know what will happen? You will get sick of the doormat. You will dump him and you'll pine for me. Because I told you to fucking get lost. That's the truth. That's the God's honest truth, man. Patrice O'Neill had a really good analogy about sharks and penguins. So, a, a boss bitch, a really hot, hot, hottie like this, you know, driven woman, has a career, oh, going for it, right? She's a shark, okay? What Jason is, or what he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be, what I'm telling you to be is another shark. She goes with a shark and, and she says, well, this shark's like not letting me change him. He's not letting me do things with him. He's not letting me... Oh, he just... Oh, but I can't stop thinking about him. But, oh, I can't be with this guy anymore. And she leaves. And she goes and gets herself a penguin. And the penguin goes, yay, shark! Yeah! Yeah, shark, you do whatever you want, shark. No problem, shark. No problem. Yeah, treat me like shit. I don't care. I'm just happy to be with you, shark. I'll put on the clothes you want me to wear. I'll get rid of all of my friends and all of my hobbies to suit you. Of course I will, because I'm a fucking penguin. Hooray! And do you know what she does? She gets bored. She eats the penguin and goes back to the shark. That's what happens. You're the penguin, Jason. You're the penguin. I hope you're the shark now. I really do. Life is much easier if you have a clear set of boundaries and a clear set of expectations for the woman in your life. And if she doesn't fucking meet them, leave. Okay? Or cool, if you don't want to break her heart, cool the relationship down until she breaks up with you. Those are your two options. Either leave or put her on red. Well, not on red, but like, you know what I mean? Cool the relationship off until, until she brings it up and says, listen, you know, I'm getting like a, a thing from you. Then you say, look, I just don't think it's working out. L make her broach the conversation that way. Or if you're lucky, she'll even come back and say, listen, it's not working out. I need to leave. And you go, okay, bye. And you leave. Right? All of those scenarios have happened to me. And they've all worked for the best. You know? I mean, the last big breakup I had was, was the American. That's the, that's the last one that took me by surprise. Every other one that I've had has either been, like, um, writing's been on the wall, and it's been like, yeah, this isn't working out, or I've engineered it, or told them, I don't want to be with you anymore, or I've engineered it and said, I'm just, like, uh, slowed down the conversations and, and the talking to them until eventually they come back and say, look, this isn't really working out, is it? And I go, no, it isn't. Let's move on. Okay, goodbye. And that's what we do. Right? Um, but don't take shit, man. As soon as, you, as soon as you hear games and you hear and somebody oversteps the mark in an expectation you've got, fucking tell them. Just tell them. Because if they're not meant for you, they're not meant for you. It's fine. Go and find somebody else. You will find somebody else. You will find a good woman, right, who is strong, intelligent, capable, and wants to come back and be your other half. Not be boss, bitch. Not be bossy. 
not be this is what I want, this is what I want. No, no, no. Your happiness doesn't matter. My happiness matters. Your happiness matters to you. My happiness matters to me. That's healthy. That's healthy. Okay? That's what we're doing here. Anyway. Okay. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Eventually, I started to snap. Yet, yeah, no shit, mate. No shit. No shit. This is the shark and you coming out. You're a penguin who's turning into a shark. Eventually, I started to snap. I tried to keep it in, though. One day, I got a phone call from one of Jean's colleagues at work. A guy who told me flat out that she had been sleeping with a guy at work. Fucking. I, and, I, and she was sleeping with a fucking shark, mate. That's what she was doing. She was sleeping with a dude at work who told her to fucking get lost. That's what he was saying to her for ages. No, no, I'm not interested. Fuck you. You're with somebody. I'm not doing that. Right? Dude, so bloody predictable. Right. She had been sleeping with a guy at work, not the guy he was calling, for a while, but broke it off like a month ago. Around the same time that she finished my makeover and transformation into the fucking idiot I now was. Yeah. So she kept him. She kept this shark, whoever it was out there, as a backup option in case you didn't work out. She's trying to mould you and sleep with Chad at work. That's what she's doing. She's moulding you into a husband and sleeping with Chad at work. She's getting a shark and a penguin. She's getting both. I screamed at her when she got home. And she protested her innocence, but no. Even if she was innocent, she had done enough at this point that the phone call had lifted the veils from my eyes. And she likely was not innocent. She would always work late at work, and on one or two times uh, uh, every, every now and again, she would even stay in the city at a hotel after work with her girlfriends, quote-unquote. Yeah, yeah, right. I was such an idiot. I packed my shit and got out. All the while, she screamed at me that I wasn't a man and that I was running back to my toys and my games. Yeah, dude, do you know what you've done? Do you know what you've done? You finally got an emotion out of her. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. With, with, with women, right, hate and love are very close. Very, very close. Emotional responses mean, most of the time, they mean that she likes you. And she likes you a lot. Okay, if my girlfriend got really pissed off with a guy at work and was really emotional and shaky about it when she got home, I would probably be like, I'm panicking here because that is a guy who is getting a lot of emotion out of my woman. And he shouldn't be. You know, if you're doing your job as a dude and she's well seated and well looked after, other guys don't don't go on her radar. They don't piss her off. They may, they may irritate her. She goes, that guy's such a fucking asshole. But they won't get visibly about it, right? If that ever happened, they, 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 she should have no more time in her brain to be pissed off at anybody else. You know, if it's a healthy relationship we're in. Same with me and women. Women shouldn't piss me off, and they don't. Right now, they generally don't. You know, I can just walk around and whatever, whatever, bitch. See you later. Right, I'm gonna go over here, and I just don't. You know, it, it doesn't fathom me at all. Because I'm with somebody who's who's making me happy. Like, they're sating me in that way. You know? And the thing is, what toxic, what a toxic woman will do, most of the time, is if, if you call them out, and you're in the right, and you leave, and you have the balls to do it, they will go straight after your manhood. That's what they do. You know when a woman has nothing left to argue with, when they go after, the, when they start saying shit like, you're not a man if, or a real man would X, or a real man would Y, right? Or I want a partner who will X, or Y. That's when you know they've got fuck all left to say, because they're wrong, and they know they're wrong, and they know they're going to have to go home and look at themselves in the fucking mirror for once. That's what it is. Okay? So never, if a woman goes after your manhood, take it as the victory. Take it as them waving the white flag that it is. That's what it is. You've won the argument. The minute, the second they go after your manhood, you've won the argument. 
They've got nothing else to say. They're just going... They're trying to make you angry, so you call them a prick. And then they can then, then they can make the argument about that, and not about the fact that they're fucking wrong. Right? Anyway. I was holding back tears the whole time, and to be honest, for years afterwards, even as my life improved, I never went back to the hobby. I was guilty. I know that's really weird, but I felt like maybe she was right. I know, man. I know. I know. I'm not even going to have a go at you for that. I'm not even going to have a go at you for that. I know. I know. Because what else are you supposed to think? Really, what else are you supposed to think? It must have absolutely fucked with your mind. I'm really sorry that happened. That sucks. That sucks so much. Then I thought back to my life before I met her. I was happy. I was still on the same job now, but had been promoted a few times. The only thing I was missing was Jean. And hey, I give better hand jobs to me anyway. <laughs> oh, what a chad. What a chad. I give better hand jobs to me anyway, bitch. There's the door. Thank you very much, mate. What a what a guy. What a guy. The only thing I was missing was Jean. And hey, I give better hand jobs to me anyway. It took a long time, but I eventually dusted off the salamanders, got a Vulcan tattoo, reinvested in some leather jackets, and went to see a Motorhead tribute band here in London who have been following around ever since. I never really looked back. Life's going well, I've got my own place, I'm doing very well financially. But the scars of that time are still there, and I still have stayed away from women in general ever since. It's been three years and my life is awesome and peaceful. My hobby is awesome and my friends never left a good brother behind. Anyway, thanks for all you do, Jason. Alright, here's a little bit of thing there, Jason. It seems like you're going your own way, which is fine. Which is fine. But don't deprive women of you. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. Right? You've got a good job. You're now you've now got a backbone. You've got clear boundaries. You, you, you don't give mixed signals. You give very clear signals. And you don't lie, right? You, you, you are basically very, very, very dateable. Don't deny yourself women, man. Don't do it. All right? The toxic ones are out there. But now you've got the tools and the equipment to recognize when it's happening and vacate the fucking premises straight away. Okay? The only guys who, who give up are the guys who've been damaged and they think all women are like this. They're not. They're not. It's just a shame that there are enough of them out there that are like this. That stories like this aren't particularly uncommon. But if you've got the wherewithal and the tools, as it looks like you have, to recognise when these bitches are around, you can leave. You've got the backbone to leave. You have a peaceful life, and it stays that way. Whatever woman comes into your life, she needs to know. This is my life. This is how cool it is. And it stays this cool. Do you understand me? You're lucky to be here with me. This is my zen. Okay? If you want to join your life to mine, no problem. Absolutely no problem. Especially if I find your life is really cool as well. We'll merge them together. And we'll have a lovely time. But my life stays stress-free. For the most part. You don't introduce complications or nonsense to my life. The minute they do, leave leave i don't mean complications as in having a kid or anything i don't mean that i mean like drama that doesn't need to be there the minute that starts leave like no 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 my life was better before you got here i know that's harsh but it was so goodbye goodbye and you're talking to a guy who's worked it took me it took you one relationship to get that backbone it took me 15 years dude 15 years of heartache and pushing and dating and accepting things I shouldn't have accepted and the coup de grace was America that was the coup, that, that was the last thing I was already pretty like on the side of like fuck you you know what I mean but but America just really snapped it and I went okay I am not accepting anything less than this now if you're below that go fuck yourself my life, I'm going to build my life the way I want it, and I'm going to be happy, 
I'm going to be doing my own hobbies with my own friends. And I'm going to be made up with the fact that my life's going the way it is. And when somebody comes into my life, they add to it, keep it the same as what it is, or they fuck off. That's it. And I've been much happier ever since. I am, I am, I am more happy now, right? Naturally, generally happy than I've ever been in my life. Ever. I've got a great job. I've got a great family. I'm putting money away. I've got a great relationship. And I've got you guys. I, I'm, I'm rich. I'm rich. Not financially. Life. I, I'm rich in life. You know? And a lot of that is to do with you guys and this channel. It really is. My life started to turn around and get better when this channel took off. Both of them are really intertwined. I've learned so much being on this channel and talking to people. And I'm really glad that I get to like give that back a little bit to you guys and like say, look, you know, when a brother's there and, he, and, he's, and he's on his knees, you help him back up. You help him back up. Anyway, love you all a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow when I'm going to do a Q&A tomorrow, which will be nice to just chill out and have a, have a, like, have a nice little talk about. Um, yeah, so we'll do a Q&A tomorrow. I love you all. Speak to you then. Have a good one. Bye now.